Bismillahirrahmanirrahim dear viewers assalamu alaikum i am your host faisal raza khan and you are watching foresight viewers today we have a very special segment of foresight in order to facilitate fast track and protect foreign investments and ensure economic re recovery in the country a high level oversight council was formed last year in june and that was special investment facilitation council which we all know as SIFC. SIFC has the focus on bringing and protecting foreign direct investments, removing all bottlenecks, hurdles, and facilitate to the maximum extent to all investors coming to Pakistan through one window operation. Sectors like mining and minerals, energy, agriculture, livestock, information technology, and defense production are the prime focus of SIFC. Pakistan endowed with uh, at least or more than 6 trillion US dollars worth of huge mineral resources which are covering an area of 600,000 square kilometers. There are 92 known and 52 commercially exploited minerals like coal, copper, gold, chromite, mineral salts, etc. When we are particularly talking about the minerals, mineral salt, like pink rock salt, Pakistan has more than 65 million metric ton of mineral rock salt deposits, and Pakistan is blessed with this natural resource. To exploit this commercially and to have byproducts, the value addition, and exports to the different destinations across the world, today, we have, we are in a state or movement where Pakistan is now excelling in this sector. To talk on this important aspect, we have in our studio today, Mr. Ahmed Nadeem Khan, and he is the chairman and president of uh, Miracle Stalwork Collective Incorporate of United States of America. Most welcome to you, sir. And we have uh, Mr. Nukman Shaheen. He is uh, chief technical officer of the same company and has an ample experience in mining sector particularly. Most welcome to you, Mr. Nukman. I started from uh, particularly when we are talking about uh, Mr. Nadeem, related to the Special Investment Facilitation Council. This is a very important segment when it comes to bringing the foreign invest investments and protecting investors in Pakistan. How do you see that? Uh, a very good experience. Uh, I believe that uh, from past couple of years, you know, uh, uh, basically uh, moving forward with the project, you know, and, uh, uh, and getting that past experience, uh, I believe that SAFC is a blessing you know for the foreign investors you know how was your experience excellent uh, they give us a full support you know to expedite the process you know and i believe so the the agreement we signed yesterday if safc is not there it's not happening you know so fast uh, they target it they want to attract the foreign investor they give the full, full opportunity to us you know especially uh, to get in and they accommodate uh, you know uh, the 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 things you know which we are looking into into the contract and I feel them very effective. So uh, when we are talking about particularly uh, the uh, overall uh, the rock salts uh, the pink salt in Pakistan huge reserves Pakistan has but unfortunately not much commercially exploited and uh, when we talk about uh, the commercial aspects of it it is important that Pakistan Ha, uh, has a desire to enhance these exports to the world. So how this agreement which was recently signed is going to help Pakistan in uh, uh, bringing the world towards uh, this pink salt resource? Uh, if, you d if you see the global markets, you know, regarding the salt, pink salt, especially the Himalayan salt, you know, uh, it's a mature product line. Uh, the product line, uh, according to the stats, you know, at this point have a market uh, value of almost uh, eight to nine billion dollars you know unfortunately Pakistan is only getting 70 million dollars you know and uh, the remaining uh, 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 because of the raw product you know mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. going to other countries there are 45 different countries you know who are doing the packaging and processing and doing the value added you know mm -hmm. and actually supply chain uh, is going to different markets you know 
Now what is happening? Our salt, which is only in Pakistan, and we are not getting benefit of that. The countries who are putting the value addition, they are getting the, the, the value, you know, of that value addition in their economy, which is really a very scary situation, you know, when you look into, you know. That product is only found in Pakistan. And how come we have 45 different countries, our own competition, you know. So this JV contract is going to create a, a direction, you know, where the value added is going to be done in Pakistan. You know, there is going to be a policies is going to be uh, if, um, is going to be designed in such a way, and requests have been given to the competent authorities, you know, that the raw salt should be banned, you know, and uh, the, it should be processed salt going from Pakistan. It is good for this venture, and it is also good for the private sector who is engaged into the salt business. Yeah. That, that's a good point. And when we're talking about uh, Lukman, how you are the chief technical officer. Mm -hmm. And when we are talking about particularly this area of pink rock salt, mm -hmm. what sort of technology, what sort of uh, new modern techniques are required? How uh, this value addition will be done? And uh, how industrial setups are going to uh, support this whole? Because ultimately, if you want to have some sort of value added product, it is needed to have technology to have industrial base. How, right. how do you see that? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that the mining that's done, salt uh, mining, is uh, underground mining, deep, uh, various depths. Uh, the geologic formations that are mined have some variability from one area of the mine to Obviously. other areas, yes. from uh, shallow depths to lower depths. Uh, so the quality of what's mined from week to week, month to month, year to year can vary. No, definitely. So um, the first part of the value addition uh, will be to carry out a, a full feasibility study to international standards to properly quantify the extent, the quality and grade and the variability of the salt that exists so that uh, a mining plan can be devised to properly select and target uh, the, the, the types of, or the range of mineralizations that are found. Um, and then uh, incorporate uh, newer technology that will eliminate, uh, for example, the use of um, drilling and blasting, mm -hmm. more continuous mechanized mining, improve the uh, ventilation systems in the mine, and importantly, increase production. If, um, as we've mentioned, there's a large market, there's an even larger potential market to be built with proper branding, um, but uh, we need to find a way to increase production. When you're talking about production and uh, exploiting this commercially, so uh, Nadim, do you not think that uh, this precious resource would Pakistan have? Uh, unfortunately, it was not much uh, uh, benefited out of that and uh, our adversary on the eastern border uh, they were utilizing it uh, for as their own product unfortunately yeah. but it was the only pink soil that is existing in Pakistan no other country so why that was and uh, whether we are doing something on that aspect as well uh, uh, basically you know when you look into it is that the neighboring country you know they took the full benefit out of it you know like still at this point when we are talking about you know they are still holding about maybe 60 or 70 percent of the global market of this pink salt the question is why you know and and we have to answer that you know that why not we you know and the supply is going from here from pakistan to them in a raw form and they are doing the processing and packaging and supply to the to the different markets you know and get full benefit out of it you know uh, and I believe so that at this point, you know, what is happening uh, with the PMDC and us, you know, and awareness that a, 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 a salt, you know, a product, you know, uh, which is only a part, which is only in Pakistan, nowhere else in the world, you know. And I want to mention it, which is very important. You know, when we are talking about this salt, it is salt. But remember, this salt have 84 natural minerals inside. No doubt about is, it. Yes. Which is very important for human and animal's body, you know, when they consume it, you know. Nowadays, when you look into the, the, the industry, you know, uh, the energy drinks, you know, what they are. They are made of this salt minerals, you know, inside, you know. 
and that is what we 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 are using you know uh, and 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 basically we can do a lot you know into all that you know the only thing is that the policies the policies should be defined very clearly and and the targets should be mentioned you know very clearly on that so in that way we we as a pakistani uh, and, and a, as a country you know which own this uh, this product line can have a full benefit of that no doubt you know i i don't say don't supply to to india you know do supply them they are 1.6 billion people living there you know but process one with the control price on that so what you got out of that when uh, when you uh, requested that uh, raw uh, pink salt must not be uh, supplied out of the country and uh, that must have to be value added uh, everyone on on i have seen an agreement on that you know the higher authorities the decision makers you know they want to do it they understand it and now i believe so they are going to uh, move forward with that so uh, lukman you have ample experience when it when we are talking about the technicalities of all that so how do you see that uh, what urgently required pakistan to exploit these resources yeah if we take a, a bit of a broader perspective beyond just uh, salt and look at the mineral potential in pakistan um i think uh, it's fairly clear from the meetings that we've had over the last few days that there's a consensus building around a number of the policy reforms that need to occur in Pakistan to encourage investment into exploration. Uh, a number of those related to uh, transparency around exploration licenses, mining leases, um, around the legal protection of those uh, licenses and leases. Um, and I think there's, a, a, there's quite clear consensus and uh, a plan forward to improve uh, those areas. Um, we uh, are all aware of Reko Dek, a very important large yes. uh, mining project. Uh, but what's important, uh, and I, it's, it's clear that the, the industry and the authorities here recognize that Reko Dek is only possible after some 20 or 25 years of exploration work. Mm -hmm. And if we want to find the next Reko Dek or the next three or four Reko Deks, that uh, we need to bring in a lot of investment into exploration and do the hard work to find those projects. And um, if there are five or ten Reko Deks to be found, remember the current Reko Dek uh, took $300 million to get to the point that it's at now. So we need to attract a lot of capital. And we need to compete with uh, nations around the world for that same capital. So to carry forward the Lukman's, um, uh, what uh, uh, he said, that uh, lots of investment required. So how much investment out of uh, that joint venture is going to be uh, into the salt sector? Uh, in the first phase, you know, we are doing the feasibility study. You know, once the feasibility study is going to be done, which is going to be a timeline of nine months, you know, uh, uh, we are going to induct $60 million, you know, in first phase, you know, which will go till 20, uh, $200 million of investment. Basically, it is a, not only the investment on, on the plant, what we are crushing plant, we are building. It is also to develop the new grounds of mining with the international standards. And you know. where you are uh, building that crushing plant? Uh, we have with the PMDC, you know, we have two sites, you know, at, at this point, Varsha and Kalabagh, you know, they are looking into. And uh, the geological surveys are going to happen, which is going to be headed by Mr. Lukman, uh, you know, and, uh, and he's going to use his team and expertise on that, you know. Uh, and uh, once that done, you know, it is going to be a website of distribution Distribu distribution centers, you know, okay. in the global countries, you know, where we are going to do the supply chain, you know, to the to the to the seg seg different segmentation of the markets, you know, and uh, we believe that uh, if we in under this venture and when this project is going to be rolling and moving forward, you mm -hmm. know, uh, uh, we are looking targeting even we target one third of the the global value of this uh, this uh, this uh, this salt, you know, what is a uh, what is the value of the, the global markets? You know, we are we are looking to increase a couple of billion dollar of a revenue, you know, stream uh, back into the the, the economical uh, uh, system of the country. You know, um, and uh, and plus, you know, when you look into another five to ten year, the market is going to grow because this is going to grow till if we are talking about 2030. You know, the stats says that the market segmentation will grow to 15 billion dollars you know so when we are talking technically when we are talking about lukman so uh, do you think that uh, this joint venture um, or the uh, the company will develop uh, some sort of a value chain from mines to consumer 
is it is it going to be that's the uh, part that's part of the strategy is uh, increased production uh, improved production process in country and um, uh, produce a number of lines of product now that's an important part of the value addition component but one area that we haven't mentioned yet is the global marketing and branding of that pink, is a very important of area. pink yes. salt as uh, something to the along the lines of authentic, authentic pink salt from Pakistan mm. meaning that if it's authentic pink salt it must be it has to be only from Pakistan mm. and that branding component is going to be very important part of the business and I think that's a a unique opportunity. So, uh, do you envisage, Ahmed Deem, when we are talking about uh, the industry reforms, do you think that the salt industry reforms are imperative to have that, uh, um, that industry must have to be vibrant, competitive and efficient? That is a very simple thumb rule in the world, you know. Uh, developed countries, you know, if you go to the developed world, you know, they do it. You know, why don't we, do, we are doing it. We are going to do the same path, you know, to move forward, you know, in that direction, you know. A uh, very important part which I have to discuss is not only the matter what we are developing in Pakistan, you know. Uh, the other big matter is that when you go to those areas, you know, this venture uh, is actually penned down with one thing, that 5% of the venture of this partnership of the equity is going towards yeah the definitely I was I was coming to that because uh, the you know, every venture it is important that uh, uh, you must have some sort of uh, uh, social protection things and uh, for the uplift of that uh, whole community and along with job creation and something like that so, so that economy must have to come th with all those people who are actually striving for their uh, better life so do you think that it is going to give something to the people in let, those let, let me say that you know when I went to those areas you know a couple of years back you know uh, unfortunately when you go and you see those surroundings you see that maybe thousands of years time stop here mm. the life is like that you know you feel poverty poverty which is unbelievable which is really hit you you know on your chest as a human you know why this is this thing is happening these, these are humans you know and how they are living you know the resource belong to their generations who are living there yes. and if we are putting the plant there and we are taking those resources and selling into the world as a premium product line and doing nothing for those people you know then we should not doing this project frankly we should walk away because at your uh, as a as, as a as a chairman of this group you know uh, and wherever we do the project you know we always concentrate that the community building is very important. Everyone say that we are going to do this, 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 this community building projects and all that, you know. But remember one thing here, we are doing something different, you know. The focus is very clear. We are joining some hand, already discussions I've done in, in United States, you know, that we are having agreement with the technical colleges there, where we are going to give some advanced mining studies, you know, and open a center here to train a HR you know in Pakistan local people you know who will get the labor job they can go there they can go with the technical uh, heads you know who are going to give them training and train that HR you know to in the mining sector you know for the next generation to carry on these things mm. you know mm. even those those technical people even go overseas you know they are the technical people they will have a better scales there you are absolutely right you are absolutely right and this is the discussion which is going on in Pakistan from the last many years that uh, we should have to train uh, our people with high skills high education so uh, technically when we are talking about uh, mr. Lukman that uh, do you think that uh, this agreement along with that these efforts which are going on uh, also create some sort of skill skilled manpower highly educated manpower in the technical areas of mining particularly and then the rock salt uh, endeavors like this and Rekodik and others in the country provide an opportunity for training and uh, experience on in the areas of for example geology and engineering even finance and uh, accounting and corporate issues um, we need more of this type mm -hmm. of investment mm -hmm. and that will help 
along the roadmap of building out an entire ecosystem mm. of um, not just uh, companies and projects, but uh, human, ca human capital in the country. So uh, when we are talking about uh, particularly the policy frameworks, the uh, rules and regulations, along with that the political stability and well-defined mining rights essential for the sector to grow. So how do you envisage particularly in the salt sector? Uh, at this point, you know, when I, when I came back and, and, and I have seen things in PMDC, you know, the, the, the chairman, the new MD, you know, they are very professional people, you know, they understand. They understand the global economies. They understand mm. the global markets, you know. And that is also, also a very healthy thing for us, you know, as a foreign investor, you know, that we know we understand one thing that basically it's a teamwork. Definitely which, which, is. which give you a success, you know. And as a partners, you know, with them, as a venture with them, you know, as, more, as we are responsible to have a success and work hard, they are part and partial with us, you know. Mm. So when we are blending as a team and everyone is doing their work, you know, the small obstacles and position is, is going to happen in the future, you know. But the end goal is to achieve the highest benchmark, to create one of the biggest salt company mm. in the world and a flagship project for the country of Pakistan. I wish you all the and best the other and thing uh, is definitely yeah. it is and, very and, important. And other thing is that to take these thousands of years of reserves which are sitting here. Yes. You know, we are not going to be alive, but the next generation and next generation should have the fruit with them, you know, and they are not going to be looking here and there. They have making billions of dollars of revenue in the country extreme, uh, uh, financial uh, systems, you know. And Pakistan, for example, I can quote again, you know, here, Qatar, Island G, one commodity, you know, look, one of the richest country in the world. We have this commodity, you know. We I have call, lots of, yeah, we have lots of. Yeah, we have a lot of that, you know. And the, when you see the broad span, look into, into that, sir, you know, the broad span, when you look the this very use of this salt, from farmers, from, from edible, to, to the industrial, industrial side, you know, in the, the pharmaceutical. pharmaceutical. Yes. It is one ingredient used in 1,000 recipes. Unless you don't put salt in your food, the taste don't develop. And this is the purest salt in the world. You know, you take from the mine, you put in the in, in your food and you eat. That much pure it is, you know. You know, sea salt is... Because we have, we have to develop this Pakistani taste across the world. Yes, really. and, and the global world, global markets and the global consumer is getting towards the organic product lines, you know. When you're talking about the sea salt, there is no match to this pink salt, obviously, you know. Obviously. Sea water is start contaminating. A lot of contamination is happening and the process is very different. Like plastics and yeah, all other this things. This is coming These from the source yes. as pure 99.9% .9 pure salt. You know, it is a blessing of God in Pakistan. That God have put the put this thing there. It's ninety nine point three percent pure, and what sort of purity you require? Yeah, actually? this is one. Any salt have you seen that antibacterial? You know, even if you have a cut on your body, you just rub this salt on 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 that cut. You know, it's going to be have a healing thing. You know. So one question uh, to Amin Nadeem and uh, Mr. Lukman to you both uh, that. Uh, uh, Huge potential Pakistan has, the mineral sector, no doubt about that. It contributes to the GDP, uh, the gross domestic product, only 1% to 2.1%. And uh, when it comes to the exports, it counts only 0.1%. So how this, uh, how your venture particularly, if we take it in salt uh, uh, sector only, how it is going to contribute? Sir, what we are going to do in this, you know, uh, we are going to try our best, you know, to actually get the most revenue stream back into the system, you know, in the global markets, you know, because this salt is going to sell in the global markets, you know, and the revenue is going to generate from those global markets, you know. There is thousands of people who are engaged in the salt business, you know, private sector, you know, and they should be coming up, you know, with the same thinking and mindset, you know, that they are also contributing into the global, into the country economy when they are exporting this thing, you know. So it is as the policy is going to be set, everyone is working on the same line length, you know. Mm. It is mutually, it's going to be benefit together. But end benefit is going to be our country economy, the revenue which is going to be generated with our GV or with other private sector, you know. Obviously. So and uh, Lukman, if can I give you, I can give you a benchmark. Uh, my last two plus decades of experience has been in Peru, exploring in Peru. Peru is a very mineral 
uh, rich country. Um, and the last three decades have seen an immense amount of investment. And in Peru, the mineral sector accounts for about 15% of the GDP and 60% of its exports. Oh. Um, Pakistan, is, uh, Pakistan has great exploration potential. And why not? Copper, gold, salt, other minerals. Uh, one, one thing is for certain, the potential exists here, mm. but the potential is only realized after investment is attracted. So Obviously. let's set the right policies to attract the investment, be patient, and do the work properly. And two, three decades from now, perhaps we can attain a point where the mineral sector is 10% or more of the GDP. So, uh, uh, Ahmed when we're talking about um, we are talking about facilitation and all that, what are the impediments and hurdles uh, you uh, see that uh, those must have to be removed if we want to exploit this whole of the mineral sector, particularly the salt area? Negativity. Be positive. That is the biggest hurdle in the mindset, you know. And especially, you know, I have to say very openly, you know, when I come to Pakistan, I see a lot of negativity, you know. We should be positive people. We have to see the positivity, you know, and move forward Definitely. with that positivity. Definitely. You know, and that is how it is, you know. If your plan is good, you know, and you have you take action on that plan to reach the benchmark, you know, you will reach it. Later or sooner it's going to happen. It's not going to be done overnight. It is a process. It is a process. Cons consistency, consistency is required. You know, definitely in policies as yes. well, in and frameworks yeah. and regulatory frameworks and all that. Yes, definitely, definitely. you know. And, and, and it's a teamwork, you know, together. And how much sincere you are, what you are doing. You know, how much sincere you are, I'm, how much sincere I am as overseas Pakistani when I'm using this commodity, when this, uh, taking this salt, and I'm going to be selling to the international, international markets, you know, and making billions of dollars and not looking back what is happening. Nobody asked to the multi big companies in the world like Morton or some other, co uh, other groups, you know, in the world, you know, they are making millions of dollars on this salt, you know. Go and see what is happening in, in Kyura or in those, back, in those areas, you know, how people are living. Yeah, definitely it is. Uh, uh, Lukman, when we are talking about technically that, uh, what about the outdated technology, how to bring new technologies into the mineral sector, uh, particularly as we are talking about the uh, pink salt sector, institutional capacity building and all that. So how technically you... Uh, uh, Overall, you see that uh, what are the improvements one, two, three are required actually uh, that we have to move fast in that sector? Well, uh, first, uh, replacing what is currently principally manual mining with mechanized mining. Um, very that, important. That will be a very important uh, improvement. Um, then, specifically in this, in these mines, um, the um, the the use of um, uh, well, well, let's say proper mine planning mm. I, I, investment into uh, exploration work to define the resource and the variability of the resource across the deposit so that um, we can produce a more consistent product and uh, market it well um, but technically it's a lot of geology good mine planning um, clean, uh, mechanized mining, and um, together with that, uh, a target to s significantly increase production um, are very uh, part uh, key components of what will go into the feasibility study. So when we are talking about uh, Ahmed Nadeem, uh, about the globally compliant rock salt mining uh, um, and manufacturing practices, uh, what your company is actually foreseeing ethical the standards that would have a lot of power when you follow that rules you know everything solves you know so when we are looking here in Pakistan you know as as Mr. Lukman is saying you know uh, high tech high tech you mm. know mm. Uh, and high tech and with international standards you know and uh, that is how and 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 plus doing the world-class branding on that you know but end of the day, it's the roots, you know, what he's talking about, where his expertise are. It starts from the mining, the site, you know, and then it go with the flow. 
you know, where the channel is upset, you know, in the mm. operational side, you cannot do it. If it is smooth, you are, you are going to do it. So what about uh, uh, Mr. Lukban when we are talking about the crushing and packaging and uh, uh, meeting the international standards and globally compliant with segregation of edible pharmaceutical and uh, chemical salt. So uh, how do you see that? Well, at, at, at the very first it begins with a proper assessment of what is in the ground what is in the ground and what are the al different alternatives for processing um, those uh, materials into how many different lines. Um, but clearly um, the uh, processing of the, the mined rock salt close in close proximity to where it's mined mm -hmm. so that um, the, from the mine to a final package product occurs in a very small amount of area, mm. uh, avoids a lot of uh, contaminants, a lot of pr uh, operational problems. Um, but, uh, you know, you're, you, there a, a lot of these questions we'll know the firm answers to after the feasibility study, okay. after we have a full assessment of how many tons, at what quality, at what depth, and that'll define the different uh, processing alternatives that are best for the mines. And definitely, it is it is the backbone of when we are talking about uh, the uh, the geological survey and all of, all that because everything depends on that. Uh, uh, Emin when we are talking about uh, your company's venture um, in Pakistan, uh, have you got any sort of a tax holiday or um, import duty relaxation or uh, for bringing some sort of machinery or? Uh, the technical things to Pakistan and also the kind of incentives when we are talking about mining sector, particularly the rock salt. Uh, we have some meeting with Board of Investment this morning and uh, they are very cooperative on that, you know, they need the details, you know, in coming days, you know. Um, and SAFC, you know, they are very, very, uh, very uh, cooperative, co cooperative on these things, you know, for the taxes and all that. Uh, you know, and uh, we want to do according to the law of the country, you know whatever is going to happen, you know, we follow that, you know. And uh, the discussions have been done, you know, and as I said, you know, that end of the day, uh, like Lukman said, that feasibility study is going to be having everything inside for the project, you know, which is going to be as a nucleus of the project. Obviously, you know, obviously. Which have all the details. What is going to be long term when we are talking about, because uh, uh, in the long okay. run, we uh, need to sustain these policies, these frameworks, along with that, the efforts which are important that we have to put in uh, the hard work which is required, because uh, you obviously said very right that uh, it is not uh, uh, going to be built in a day. You have to uh, exercise everything but the hard work must have to be at the forefront. So how do you see that in long term? In the long term, the, the team that's put together will be the key. A high quality team um, in country here that um, uh, is well uh, uh, versed in the high standards that we plan to put in place. And um, like any, uh, any human endeavor, uh, the success of it depends on the quality of the humans that are involved. Mm. And uh, I think that will be an important part of the challenge in front of us is to put together a very strong Pakistani team that will um, be able to sustain these uh, efforts f over the long term. So whether uh, the human resource uh, is going to be trained first or the project is going to be initiated earlier because that is very important because side by side parallel you have to go. You, have, you need a uh, best human resource, skilled, well educated and well versed that you have to, uh, you are entering into the mining sector. Mm -hmm. Along with that you uh, need to require acceleration in the project as well. So how do you see both in that sense? Well, clearly at the beginning, we'll have to find the best skills uh, available globally. Um, and the feasibility study that uh, we will be completing will be in accordance with international technical standards that are recognized by uh, stock exchanges and uh, securities commissions of uh, stock exchanges in different parts of the world, like Canada, for example, which will mean uh, incorporating individuals into the team that are are qualified to do that work. And uh, to the extent that 
we might find some people in Pakistan to help with that. Uh, that obviously will be first priority. Uh, so I guess what I'm uh, saying in, in too many words is uh, it will take time to find the right people and then to train them. Um, and five years from now, we should have a much larger pool of well-trained people uh, than we did it than we do at the start. So uh, uh, I was studying. Might be I I'm wrong in that sense, but uh, I was studying that in 2026 there would be a commercial production of uh, what we call the value-added uh, uh, salt products uh, uh, from Pakistan. Exports are going to be yearly, and it is going to be at least 150,000 metric tons, or must, might be more than that. So do you think that uh, it is going to be in 2026 or earlier? Uh, we are going to follow the target of the dates, you know, which is mentioned in the in the contract, you know, and uh, uh, and we will we are sure we will follow that 100 percent, you know, and especially on the on your question, you know, on the talent pool, which Lukman was saying, I want to say something, uh, you know, uh, Pakistan have a very talented DNA, you know, uh, very talented pool, you know, maybe one of the best in the world, you know, when you look into. Uh, the young generation here, you know, they are very talented. They are not. You right. both have the same DNA. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and and you know. But we're um, not young. Yeah. <laughs> <with> <laughs> it's the, okay. Yeah, with the other things. You look young. Yeah. Really, plus, really. Thing, uh, which he said very 100 percent right. Mm. Uh, with the training, we can be get best of the best out of them. You know. Yeah, definitely. When you you're actually uh, uh, your company uh, is uh, they're from United States of America and you live there in Canada. What's the feedback of investing in Pakistan from the business communities of United States of America and Canada? If you, if you just answer. If you sure. Um, you, uh, I'll just point out that Canada is a very strong center for uh, mineral investment globally. So investors in Canada are uh, aware of uh, in mining potential in Latin America, in Southeast Asia, Central Asia, wherever it might be. Um, so Pakistan is a new destination a new idea. The development of uh, advancement of Reko Dek hmm. has opened some eyes and uh, there's a new opportunity. Obviously but it is new yes. for, for investors. So, uh, Ahmed Nadeem, if you uh, elaborate. In, in, in the United States, you know, uh, uh, I, I am like overseas Pakistani, uh, you know, uh, uh, and uh, always feeling is very different when you come home. You know, it's your motherland. You're always going to be your motherland, you know. Uh, the feeling is very positive from United States, our, 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 our board of directors, mm -hmm. our partners are, are, are totally focused 100% to do the investment and move forward, you know, with the multiple projects, you know, not only salt, you know, in the future. And the positivity is there. You have to give some positive examples, you know, to in front of those people, you know, uh, because sometimes we have to understand that we are looking towards other people. We have to understand how they are looking towards us, you know. Definitely, and, it is. And that is very important, you know. So, uh, feeling is very good, you know, and I believe so that slowly and steady you will see those doors are going to be open and the way things are happening in the country, you know, and uh, we have to do it. Do we have any option? So, do you uh, foresee the pink revolution uh, in Pakistan in the form of uh, the pink rock salt in future particularly? This is a, this is going to be happen. This is, this is written. This is a destination, you know. The reason is because it is found only in Pakistan, nowhere else in the world. Gold, copper, lithium, everywhere in the world. This, this salt is only found in Pakistan. We have to do it. People are going to come over. World is going to come over. People, the, it is a mature product. Now there is no option. You know, it is on us. Make it or break it. Definitely yeah. it is. And uh, Mr. Lukman, when we are talking about technically, you, are, you have an ample experience technically in mining sector. Uh, what are the prerequisites or uh, what ingredients are required right now that we have to just do it right now to um, just accelerate in the mining sector of Pakistan? Well, there's a, there's a lot to be done. Um, the, um, the, the areas of uh, geology and uh, mining engineering, um, I think it would be v a worthwhile endeavor to pursue uh, some alliances between uh, post-secondary university mm. uh, 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 universities here in Pakistan with overseas universities to help develop faculty and staff uh, to build out those, uh, those areas of study. But 
that has to be done in parallel with uh, industry creating work opportunities mm -hmm. for those uh, soon to be graduates. So I think uh, hand in hand, both the academic side and the private sector side, one step at a time, create some work opportunities, some training, uh, create additional uh, employment opportunities. Uh, I'll give you uh, uh, the example again of going back to Peru. Uh, when I moved to Peru in the mid-1990s, um, most of all of the uh, engineers that I worked with were foreign engineers, Canadians and Americans and Australians. Uh, now, uh, 30 years later, uh, they're all Peruvian engineers and all Peruvian geologists. And in fact, some uh, projects that are being done outside of Peru mm. are being staffed by Peruvian engineers. So with some time, um, with uh, uh, some cooperation between universities here and those uh, overseas with the mining experience and uh, investment to create uh, work opportunities, uh, I think with time, uh, we can solve these issues. And if you briefly uh, tell us about that, uh, how your experience is, uh, 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 how your experience to be in Pakistan and uh, to deal with the uh, government sector, particularly the Special Investment Facilitation Council, if you both uh, have some brief words. Two words, love it. Love mm -hmm. it, this time. And I think it uh, is a very important message to the world that the SIFC identified four areas of high priority and that one of them was mining and minerals. I think that message alone was very important. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Lukman Shaheen. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, uh, once again, uh, thank you very much for being here in Pakistan, into your country. And uh, thank you very much for taking interest in the mining sector as well. Thank you very much, Ahmed Adim Khan, uh, for your time. and. Uh, being here in the studios, thank you so nice. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Well elaborated discussion. Uh, viewers, as you have just listened to our panelists, uh, they are uh, Pakistanis by DNA, by their heart, and uh, uh, they are uh, coming straight away, uh, came here in Pakistan, and they are uh, going to uh, have uh, uh, more ventures in the mineral sector, particularly when we are talking about the uh, pink salt, rock salt uh, uh, sector and uh, no doubt that each and every uh, sector under focus of uh, Special Investment Facilitation Council is very important. If uh, will be developed as envisaged, uh, particularly the rock salt uh, uh, exports from Pakistan, uh, it will help in development of uh, uh, not only this sector, but also the revenue generation, the job creation, as well as socio-economic uplift, of, especially of those areas which are deprived and underdeveloped. So, uh, but for that matter, it is important that we have to focus our policies, we have to just focus our frameworks, and along with that, the political stability is inevitable uh, for having a broader and uh, sustainable economic stability in future. This is today's uh, uh, foresight special. It's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz